Hello, welcome back to my complete Blu-ray collection overview series for 2012 and this is cycle 13 and it is uh, limited editions um, which kind of covers a few different things. Some of them aren't completely limited but just things that didn't fit in anywhere else basically. And the first one is from Plain Archive who are a fantastic um, you know, uh, distributor of films, of Blu-ray editions. Set the absolute gold standard, sorry. Um, for you know, Blu-ray releases and the attention to detail on releases, and uh, this one is one of the best editions I've ever seen of anything. It is uh, the Wrestler. It's a plain archive number zero zero two. Uh, I have a nice matte finish slip with again the Wrestler there is very slightly embossed. Even Mickey Rock on the top is slightly embossed. I've done a video showing this in depth. You can see all the all the the funny details of it, but it's a fantastic uh, outer slip. Brilliant. I mean, the film's fantastic, and then you open up the uh, you pull out the, the steel book itself on the inside, you have a gorgeous book, and the steel book is just incredible, absolutely incredible. You open it up and you get the full, I think that's just beautiful, gorgeous stuff. And on the inside, you have great inside artwork and you know, the disc artwork, you get all sorts of like art cards and things like that. It's just, you know, stacked release. Um, and the wrestler is. One of my favorite films, you know. I mean, I'm a big wrestling fan, so I'm kind of predisposed to kind of enjoy it. But I think anyone can enjoy it for the amazing drama film that it is. Really, um, you can see kind of the the booklet artwork comes out. It's all in Korean. The booklet artwork, of course, Play, Play and Archive are a Korean distributor. But uh, you know, I don't want to open it too much to bend it. But there's some great shots in there and things like that. So yeah, fantastic release. The film itself. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. A brilliant film by Darren Aronofsky. Mickey Rourke is amazing in it. Um, and then I have another Plain Archive release which I'll show you and it's over in Norway. So again, we're gonna do a bit of time hopping. We're gonna do a bit of country hopping. Here we go. And here we are cutting between time and space and I'm now here in the future in a different country and I'm gonna show you the other Plain Archive um, edition I have. I love the company, I love the editions. If I could buy them all I would, uh, even some of the films are not that interesting because I think they're an amazing company, they've released some great ones uh, recently as well, Ida, a, a Polish film which was incredible, I really wish I could have got that one, they're now releasing Two Days One Night, another amazing film, Rust and Bone, I wish I could have got that one, uh, but I'm really happy that I have one of these at least, well I have The Wrestler obviously, but um, I have another one and it is blue, it's the warmest colour, this is an incredible release, it's hard to really explain but kind of the cover is a matte finish, but the whole of um, Leah Sadu here, the actress, is kind of a glossy finish, but there's a sparkle gloss to it. It's really hard to describe, but it's like absolutely exquisite. I mean, Plain Archive, they go above and beyond with the, the finer details. I mean, the, the spine itself is embossed, and you'd never guess it. You'd never guess that this spine was embossed. Um, very slightly it is. Um, again, they, they go above and beyond with the details. I love how you have her blue hair which is very prominent in the film and it kind of bleeds over to the top there I love how uh, just the, the back cover is one of the, the best shots in the whole film one of the best moments in the film with uh, Adele Exarchopoulos there and in the back there's a quote from the film and on the bottom it tells you uh, the specs it is region free and the limited number I believe this was only a thousand copies and I have 990 of 1000 on oh, no, is it? yeah of 1000 copies they probably did another thousand for the Korean market, but for international customers, it was only one thousand copies for this. So I'm very happy to have gotten it. Um, inside, you have um, a booklet, quite a thick booklet actually. Put the uh, the movie down. Again, one of the best shots of the film. A nice blue theme on the back. It's really like sturdy, like material. Great quality printing. Just fantastic. I don't even want to open it that much. You know, it's that gorgeous, uh, and the film is. The film's incredible. Um, I definitely think it gets a bad rap because of the sex scenes. Uh, and for me, I feel like the film would have been exactly the same without the sex. Well, not exactly the same, but I understand why they were there. You know. Um, oh, and there's actually English in this. I forgot. They, they're kind of trying to cater to the English market now, and so um, the Korean does have English translations, or the English has Korean translations, but it has the English as well in some of the interviews and stuff, which is very cool. Um, so what is this, who's this with now? Let me just uh, this is an interview with the director of uh, Abdelatif Kashish. Yes, it is. 
Okay, so you get kind of his thoughts on the film. I should probably read that at some point. Um, but yeah, the sex scenes in the film uh, were a bit over the top, but for me, they kind of, each one had a purpose, you know. Uh, one was kind of showing their absolute lust, and I think, you know, most people have been through that stage within a relationship, and it just shows that absolute, just raw, unedited lust between, you know, two people who are, you know, in lust with each other. I mean, they, they go on to be in love with each other and they have a connection, but that shows that. And I think, yeah, it's probably a bit too extreme, probably. Um, but I mean, it's warts and all, and that's kind of what European cinema has been, you know. It's been a staple of European cinema showing stuff like that. And then the next sex scene shows the different side of it, and then the other one shows a different side. So there's different like layers to it. And uh, But yeah, I think that it would have been a much more accessible film without the sex scenes and without the reputation that the film has, unfortunately. It precedes it in a way. Uh, especially when the actresses came out and said that, uh, you know, they weren't... <laughs> Uh, they weren't too thrilled working with the director. He was very hard to work with with the the sex scenes and just general scenes, you know, just normally because he was a perfectionist and people had uproar about this. Oh, he's exploiting them sexually and everything. And then they later clarified, well, no, not really. We're just saying that, you know, he was very hard to work with, but that was for a reason. And that's why the film was so good because he was so, you know, driven by his vision for the film. So here's the um, the actual movie. It comes in a slim, uh, clear case. Um, and if you open it up you have this, which is for me one of my favourite scenes of trying to get without glare it's one of my favourite scenes of the film, one of my favourite shots when they first meet in the bar or when they first start you know, a conversation up with each other um, the inside as well is, is beautiful take that out for a second um, first of all, I mean this is what really struck me when I first got this was just the disc artwork, blue hair you know, such a simple touch, but it looks so cool. And uh, and then the inside artwork, you have that shot of them, uh, which is used on the, the cover of the Criterion release, I believe, and is one of the posters. And uh, it's just brilliant. So there's that. And then also inside, you get um, postcards and things like that. Oh, I think there's only two, maybe two postcards. That's that shot again. One of my favorite shots where the kissing and the light is in between their lips. And then you have like a little lobby card there as well. So really really nice release I don't know if it's like going for crazy money now probably is like all plain archive releases I wish they were just wide releases that they could you know that anyone could buy and they could keep reprinting them but it's the nature of the beast and it's why they they sell out and make so much money because they are collectors items I'm glad that I got this one at least it's an amazing three-hour odyssey of uh, love loss heartbreak and joy and sexuality and I loved it uh, now I also want to show you another limited edition thing I have, I, I was, I'm not sure where I was going to fit it in with everything else, but um, this is one that uh, is another Korean release, it's not from Plain Archive, it is Kimchi DVD I think, uh, the blue collection uh, released by Kimchi DVD I think, and um, I'm not going to open it up and show you everything, I've done a full video on it, as I have done with Blue's Warm's Colour, but you can check it out, go on my channel and search for this, it is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, the uh, Kimchi DVD. Uh, exclusive steelbook. Uh, probably my favorite steelbook I own, I would say. I love everything about it. It's one of my top 10 favorite films of all time. You got uh, Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet there. This is uh, the title's embossed. There's a nice uh, deboss border. I even love the J card. I kept the J card on just because you got Joel there and the J card feels like a real nice kind of quality material. It's not just a piece of plastic. And you got like the back cover there. The back of the steelbook is gorgeous as well. One of my favorite parts of the film. And I love as well how the spine. There's a there's a color theme to the spine, and basically what it is, is uh, this is Clementine's hair, Kate Winslet's hair, the color of her hair when they first meet, and this is the color of her hair at the last point you see them in the film. So it's the it's the evolution, and it's the I just love that little touch on the spine. It was really really cool. But inside you got all sorts of stuff, uh, like a film cell bookmark. Again, you can search my channel for the uh, Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind Steelbook unboxing. You'll probably find it pretty easily. And there's like a little lacuna envelope with all these little art cards and things like that I mean it's just stacked, there's a, a booklet as well mini poster or like a little card of one of the posters, I mean it's just beautiful release and this is another limited one, but I don't think this this might still be available, it didn't like light the collector world on fire uh, which is good for me because I managed to get one for you know a decent price I thought, I mean I, I'm happily, I would happily pay £20 for this or 25 knowing the attention to detail that's gone into it and just knowing, you know, that you know you're gonna own one of your favorite films if it is one of your favorite films, uh, in such an amazing deluxe edition. This is something I've been waiting for, you know, for a great edition of this film. Obviously, the, the special features are all the same, 
but the the packaging just makes it special and it, it's a film that deserves it I think I've waffled on far too long so I've got so much more to talk about or I have talked about so much more uh, in the rest of this video with the limited editions but this one is one of my favorite Blu-rays that I own in my entire collection one of my favorite films so obviously that's gonna go along with it but uh, yeah it's just great to see these films kind of getting that getting that release you know and even if it is to uh, if it's a limited release and loads of people buy them just to buy them to, to say I have one of the kimchi exclusive uh, Blu-ray steelbooks do you like the film never seen the film you know I mean they had three versions of this I was gonna get the one with the lenticular slipcover but I just like this one more and it had the film cell bookmark and I loved the, the bookmark so they hooked me in with that and I'm gonna stick with that and you know they, they had three editions of this this one the one with the lenticular um, slip cover, so it's identical but just with a lenticular slip cover without the bookmark and then there's a third one with like a full slip like the um, the blue is warmest color like an outro cardboard box and you could buy all three of them in a quad pack with another outer box with new artwork and stuff and just buying three of the same steel books with different outer packaging and one other outer package absolute madness to me, they even do quad packs they release the film in four different variants and you can buy all four of them in this deluxe but it's just a bit too much for me. I mean I love the film, even if I had the money I wouldn't go for a quad for a triple pack or whatever. You know, just the one edition is enough for me but um, there you go. Till the Sunshine of the Spotless Mind and uh, Plain Archives, uh, Blue's the Warmest Colour. And this is one of the rare editions where I have, uh, or rare instances where I have an edition that is like this with a cardboard out of box and the box is in pristine condition and it still is. There's no wear, there's no tear on it because I keep it uh, quite you know, safely secured on my shelf. But also because Plain Archive, they ship this in a box with about uh, a million yards of bubble wrap. So they really know collectors and that's really reassuring as well. So if you're interested in, in buying from them, I highly recommend it. They will, keep, they will take care of your order. Great company. There you go. So back now to past Luke, to Wales Luke where he'll... Heel. I'll look at uh, some of the rest of my limited editions in my collection. Without any further ado, there we go. All right, we're back, back in Wales, and this is the uh, deluxe edition. Actually, no, I'm going to save this for a different part of the series. So uh, this is going back down here. <laughs> uh, next, we have uh, the Keepsake Edition, which is probably one of the lamest um, names for an edition of a film, but it is Dirty Dancing, which is in a DVD-sized case and a sparkly uh, title treatment there. On the back, uh, you have loads of special features, brand new extras, Patrick Swayze tribute, of course, this was released after his passing, I believe. Uh, commentaries, outtakes, music videos, interviews, original screen tests, multi-angle dance sequences, the works, basically. And you open it up, and uh, really, really nice digipack. Sure it's not like that. Really, really cool stuff. I love this film, I think it's fantastic, you know. Um, wouldn't even call it a guilty pleasure, I just love it. Um, take all the discs out. Get a nice look at the uh, the inside artwork on this, and this was going really cheap. I got it for my fiance, as I know she loves the film. But you got you know great artwork on the inside of the discs, the disc holder things there. And here is a, a booklet, uh, which you can take out. Nice, nice thick booklet. You know, just great photos and all that kind of stuff. Won't take it out. It's called the Keepsake Book. Um, but yeah, a brilliant edition. You know, I haven't really checked out the special. Oh no, we watched the outtakes actually. And they were a lot of fun. Um, Connie hadn't seen them before, so that was uh, that was cool. Um, and yeah, just a great addition. Um, big fan of Dirty Dancing. Um, it's kind of funny that you know Patrick Swayze is so old <laughs> in the film. <laughs> like the, it's like I always think of that Family Guy joke where he's like, "Hey, nobody puts baby in a corner," and the dad's like, "Dude, you're like 35." <laughs> you know? But apart from that, and apart from the fact that he turns into a bit of a wuss. Um, but that, that's, I suppose that is quite a good thing that you see a different side to a male, you know, romantic lead. But yeah, Dirty Dancing, great stuff, great edition as well. Uh, then we have this is a limited edition release. It is an Arrow Academy release, 25th anniversary of Cinema Paradiso, fantastic film that follows this character here from the moment he's a young boy in a small Italian town up until um, he's a middle-aged man who kind of goes back and kind of looks back on his past and reflects on his past. It's a very nostalgic film. I love films that deal with nostalgia. Two Disc Special Edition has, you know, newly restored, you know, uh, transfer the original 124-minute version and the 174-minute director's cut. Uh, audio commentary, 52-minute documentary profile on uh, uh, Giuseppe Tornatore. Um, Featuring interviews and documentary on the making of the film and the characters, the kissing sequence discusses the origin of the kissing scenes and 
uh, all sorts of stuff and then you open it up and there's some really nice packaging you have uh, the front cover there again you have the young boy looking at the film reels uh, you have the young boy and the uh, uh, the character from the film, I forget his name, I've only seen the film once but it is it is, it is a masterpiece and then you got the, the two discs there and I love the uh, the booklet which uh, is kind of shaped a bit like a cinema stub, admit one cinema parody so and so yeah Arrow Video are fantastic at these releases and when they started trans transitioning over to doing Arrow Academy where they release more classic films in the, in the way that they would do their deluxe kind of horror B-movie cult movie releases it was awesome to see and this is uh, one of those kind of uh, the big ones I think uh, I know it's been released in a standard Amory case but this is really the one to get if you love this film uh, then we have a complete departure from a film like Cinema Parody so we have Alan Partridge Alpha Papa the Colossal Velocity Edition big Alan Partridge fan this is the HMV exclusive there were loads of these there was like a steel book there was this one there was um, someone else I'm sure and it's a big digi book uh, style package, North, North Norfolk Digital. I think if you open it up all the way, it's like a big long image. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. And on the inside, you got another big long image of uh, kind of the the siege and Alan. Uh, and then on the inside, you have a kind of mini magazine, short lift magazine, which is just like a fake parody magazine they've made, which features Alan as the uh, the editor. And so that's a lot of fun to read. And this has the Blu-ray, the DVD, and the uh, the soundtrack CD as well. I believe is the third disc. Yeah, the original movie soundtrack. So it's a pretty damn cool deluxe edition for a film that is you know just a just another British comedy film. But it's a it's a film ever, all the Alan Partridge fans were waiting for years to see this film. We'd heard the plot for like ten years and finally got to see it come to fruition. I think it's brilliant. It really made me laugh, and it's a great addition to the Alan Partridge universe. Uh, then we have uh, Zodiac, the director's cut. Uh, the only thing special about this is it's, it's a slip box, so you know, the, this comes out like that. And I believe this has a reversible, um, yeah, this has reversible artwork. So you've got the you know Zodiac there like that, opens up like that. I'm going to change it now actually because I quite like the idea. Um, the film itself is brilliant. I watched it for the first time last year. Um, great cast: got Jake Gyllenhaal, Robert Downey Jr. Um, there's some real tense moments in the film and it's about this Zodiac killer and basically how people are trying to track track this killer down and, and find him and there you go, it looks like a like the letter, which is brilliant. So I love that, I'm gonna keep it like that I think. Don't know why I never did it before, but yeah, this is this is a David Fincher film directed wonderfully by David Fincher. Tons of special features, like loads of commentaries and an exhaustive behind-the-scenes documentary on the making of Zodiac. You know, David Fincher goes all out with the releases of his films on Blu-ray in terms of special features, and this is no different. Um, again, this film's like two and a half hours long. Um, but yeah, I don't want to spoil too much. Mark Ruffalo, of course, is a big part of the film. I don't want to spoil too much about it, but it's a great murder mystery thriller. Absolutely fantastic. Um, now these are two kind of, I think, out of print films that are kind of hard to come by now. And they're Arrow video releases back in the early Arrow days on Blu-ray. And they're the window box editions. There's one of Dawn of the Dead, which is very hard to get now. Uh, of course, George A. Romero's classic uh, 70s film, the follow-up to Night of the Living Dead. Um, if you take this out, be very careful. So you see it's got the, the window there, because you can have choices of different artwork. So you have the back cover, which is the one I've used. Or you can use that cover and then you can flip it around and there's two more covers and this is a real thick weighty release you've got a, a massive booklet uh, poster as well you know I mean this is a true deluxe edition and here's the booklet won't bother flicking through it and then you can see another one of the, the versions of the artwork on the inside there and it has uh, a blu-ray and two DVDs and that's another one of the artwork there um, it has multiple versions of the film, but not on Blu-ray. There's only one version of the film on Blu-ray, which is a shame, I will say. If they were going to kind of go back and change anything about this release, I would say that they should have the, the alternate cuts of the film on Blu-ray. But yeah, you have the theatrical cut in high definition, uh, audio commentary, two audio commentaries, document of the dead, all sorts of bonus features. There's like these guys who go to a con convention that I think goes back to the original mall, or at least one that's like it, and the cast is there and stuff, really cool. Uh, director's cut on DVD and uh, the Dead Will Walk documentary, uh, the Argento cut on disc three DVD, all sorts of great uh, bonus features. 
So yeah, it says feature running time 694 minutes. I don't know if even you added, even if you added up the three versions of the film, I don't think you would get 694 minutes. That must be including all the special features, all the film with the commentaries. But yeah, this is a fantastic release. I love Dawn of the Dead. Probably my favorite zombie film. Once it gets going, I just love it. I love the whole concept. It's been done to death since, but it's the original, you know. Yeah, love this film. We got this, man. We got this by the ass. Um, and then the other window box limited edition I have is Battle Royale by uh, Kinji Fukusaku, uh, which I might have butchered, but there you go. This has a theatrical cut. It has uh, the special edition director's cut. I don't know if that's on Blu-ray. Um, tons of special features the making of, conducting the film, uh, shooting the special edition, interviews, all sorts of stuff. It's absolutely stacked. Um, yeah, um, it has some great alternate artwork. The one I've gone with is this, obviously. And then you have this on the front, and you open it up. And you, I mean, this has you know a great booklet inside. Just put this down a second with. A great booklet inside. It has a, a poster as well, and there's also a comic inside. But um, it was so. Um, well, I'll just show you this. There's another one. The, the artwork in there. So the theatrical cut is on Blu-ray, and the director's cut is also on Blu-ray. Okay. So the the third disc of special features a DVD, and there's the other other artwork there. But yeah, there also was a like a fifty or sixty page comic book that came with this, and it just made the the whole thing so thick that um, it was hard to get back into the window box and so I, I took it out. Let's see what it says here. Um, it should, a 32 page comic, um, Battle Royale Parents Day, an all new exclusive comic. So I have it somewhere in uh, in a drawer but yeah, amazing release. I love the film Battle Royale. I wish it wouldn't get compared to The Hunger Games because they're two different things but excellent, visceral, violent, gory, bloody, awesome. What have we got? We have a few more. We have two of the HMV uh, limited edition artwork releases. They're window box as well, but not quite to the high standards of the Arrow ones. This is 12 Monkeys, and basically what you have is uh, two cards that you can put inside to have different artwork. I mean, they're kind of lazy with these because this one doesn't really make a good front cover. Um, you got this there, and then this. I mean, if you this this looks cool, right? You're like, oh, that'd be a good front cover to display. So you stick it in. And look, it just it cuts it off. So they're really badly designed, but I do like the concept at least. And then you have the uh, the Amory on the inside. I do love Twelve Monkeys. I think it's a fantastic film. Uh, I love the the story. You know, I love time travel films. And uh, yeah, this is Terry Gilliam, isn't it? Yeah, and his direction is fantastic. I'm not sure what special features are on this. Um, Bonus features, an hour and 40 minutes, so it should have the feature length documentary on it, which was on the DVD and was really, really good. Went into the whole making of the film and the marketing and everything, and was really interesting. Uh, the next one is American Graffiti uh, by George Lucas. Haven't watched this one yet. Um, again, doesn't list any special features on the back, but it does say that there's an hour and 44 minutes of them. Maybe it's on the back of the Amory. Um, nope. <laughs> okay, so there's not really too many good artwork choices here either, but. I picked it up on a whim, so I'll have to check it out at some point. And finally, uh, two more. We have a slipbox version of Heaven's Gate, the uh, restored version. Uh, Michael Cimino's follow-up to The Deer Hunter, which tanked and kind of ruined his career a little bit, from what I understand. Let's try and get the Amore out. Uh, I'm not sure if this has it, a booklet or anything, to be honest. No, it's just the two discs and the Amore like that. Uh, we have the main feature on Blu-ray and... Uh, a bonus DVD, an interview with Jeff Bridges, and uh, final cut, the making and unmaking of Heaven's Gate. So it was kind of uh, Michael Cimino wasn't able to release his full vision of this, and it was edited down. And so this kind of restores his original vision for it. It was released in Criterion as well, and this is just the UK release. And so yeah, the main feature is now almost four hours long. Really can't wait to check it out at some point. And finally, the extended Blu-ray collector's edition of James Cameron's Avatar, which is the best film ever made in my opinion. I'm just kidding, calm down. Uh, do you know what I can't understand about Avatar? It's, that it's the biggest film of all time, and I don't know anyone who likes it. Um, so this is kind of a, a slip cover here. You take that off, or you try and take that off. Inside the slip cover is a slip box. You've got Nateri there. And then you take the 
the, the Amore case out of the middle and there's no kind of title there, so it's very simple artwork. And on the inside you have some inside artwork and the three discs, I believe there is uh, just tons of special features on this and I think all three versions of the film. I'm not too sure, let's check out the back after I put the slip cover back on. And this is the end of the video now so I can take a little bit of time to just uh, get this back on. It's not seeming to go on too well. Oh, there you go. Uh, right, so disc one, you have Avatar, the original theatrical version, the collector's extended cut, the special edition re-release cut, uh, and a family audio track, all objectionable language removed. Interesting. And then disc two, you have Filmmaker's Journey, over 45 minutes of deleted scenes, uh, exclusive documentary capturing Avatar and uh, production materials. And then disc three, you have Pandora's Box, which has production featurettes, Avatar archives, and scene deconstruction. Of course, this film looks amazing on Blu-ray. The special features are fantastic. And I'm a big fan of this film. Wouldn't put it on a, any list of my favorites or anything like that. Um, but I think it is very, very good and it gets a bad rap. So there we go. That was kind of the limited edition slash, yeah, I'd say the limited editions uh, cycle of this series so far. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you with the next one.